hello and welcome to the channel um got uh, a bit of a strange beast today to look at so this is a, a tannoy pa um one of the very early ones and uh, if we zoom in you can see it's got uh, guy fountain's name on there this is one of the really really early ones um there's quite a bit of history online about Tannoy and I'm sure most of you probably know already so I'm not going to go through that in detail I'm just going to focus on this particular model so this amp is a series filament amp which means it's basically it's got no power transformer it takes its power straight from the mains straight to the filaments of the valves um, and then um, that's there's a feed rectified for DC and that goes on for the HT and to run the rest of the amp yeah, that's a bit of a outlined uh, explanation for that but that's basically how these work so we're going to take take off well have a, let's have a look what we've got first on the front so we've got obviously being a PA so we've got some very stiff controls as well so that's a mic one uh, mic two or gram and then we've got a tone control which which good grief Gloria that really is uh, oh I can't see what's wrong with that now yeah that, the knobs loose so we've got two mics two microphone channels and, and a tone so we're going to convert this into a guitar amp narrow it it's serious filament and if I just lift off the lid you can have a look at what we're cooking so this is a this got some really uh, odd valves in as well so let's start off with these two output tubes here these are KT 33 C's um, the heater filament voltage is 25 volts for those and but we're not going to be using those now under this um, can that we've got here which is somehow connected to that transformer and I did that before basically the top comes off just let me EF37A this is a pentode tube um, that we've got there and I've tested these tubes and they all test really well so that's that one and then here we've got now this is 6A something um, the pin out is same as a 6A T6 although it may not be a 6A T6 which is a um, double diode triode valve so that's that one now I've got transformers we've, we've got an output transformer and we've got a choke on there um, and that strange beast that looks like an accordion is uh, the actual rectifier I'll just zoom in on that so you can have a, have a closer look there now that um, that rectifier um, Guy Fountain invented that from what bits I've read quote me if I'm wrong in the comments but that's that's the diode this uh, thing here is is a variable resistor um, and the AC basically comes in off the, off the mains and then it's it's so one of those feeds will be for the filaments one will be for um, I think there's three on there one will be for the uh, for the DC for the uh, diode to convert to DC and so on I've not really delved into it that much and the reason is is that uh, um, I'm not going to use that on this so basically when I've removed those which is what I'm going to do I'm going to remove this remove the resistors I'm going to have enough space to put uh, a power transformer on and that's what I'm actually going to do on this get rid of the KT's we're going to put a couple of 6 V6's in it uh, but we're going to try and keep the original design of, of the amplifier the circuitry if we can um, because rather than rip it all out and wire it to some general um you know just something like a 5e3 or something like that it's just every amp just becomes the same so we're going to try and keep as as much as we can of this original circuit of this amplifier 
uh, but basically all we're going to do is swap the output tubes the output transformer is blown um, and I've already tested that theory um, and I'll show you later in the video we've done some tests with that um, the output transformer is blown and but that's no big deal because it it's um, it's a linear uh, output transformer so we don't want that for a guitar amp that basically means that the the screens uh, are also fed from uh, from the transformer as well as the, the plates on the valves um, which we don't generally have on guitar amps so I've got transformers and things so it's no big deal I've got a, a chassis with a couple of transformers on um, this item here however let's just zoom in on him and have a, a bit of a butcher's now he's going connected to the screen of that tube because the, the top cap there is on the valve sorry the top cap there is, is screen on there so that's some kind of transformer no schematic for this amp can't find one it's a very early model uh, there is schematics for, for some for a model or two up from this but no no schematic farm for this one but that again is not a big deal so we're going to try and keep as, as much as this as we can now whether we end up keeping this transformer again I don't know um, and we need to trace out where the inputs are coming in so the inputs are there's one on the side here and one on the back and obviously one for each of these now I don't know whether both inputs go through this pentode and then through that triode into the valves and that's actually not the phase inverter by the way I thought it was when I looked we'll look at that again in a minute um, or whether one channel goes through the pentode and one channel goes through the triode which is probably the case so we may have to, we only really want one input on this amp so we'll just do away with with the second one so let's uh, let's tip it upside down and have a look at the gubbings so here we are looking inside and you can see you've got some very old capacitors including there uh, got a wax one there so there's some old real old stuff um, another wax one there you can see we're looking at him so these this here is one of the inputs and the second input is down there in the corner you can see him there if you hone in on him now this I think is the phase inverter whilst I've not megaly trace that uh that little transformer on there if we hone in that i think is the phase inverter phase splitter uh, the amps cathode biased and we can see that's the cathode resistor there and the uh, and the bypass capacitor this amp does initially actually have a ground on it um which they've created through um using these two condensed uh, two capacitors here and then running that to the ground ground loop you can see so it did have a three uh, th three prong cord on it but we all know the dangers of series filament amps so we're going to add a, a transformer to this you can see inside there so we want to try and keep as much of this um, circuitry as we can this original design um and it's just a matter of tracing uh, tracing out the imp are the imports are wired uh pretty much going to leave the re we'll recap it obviously but we'll pretty much keep the rest and we'll just finish up with one input on it and it should be a quite a tool so where are we getting the transformers from so let's just have a look at those so the transformers are on this cinema amp chassis um and I've got a choice of two output transformers. So I've got this one and I've got a slightly large, probably not much bigger actually. So I've got, I'll probably use use that. That's for two 6B6s anyway. Now the, 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 the only thing with this amp is, which is no big deal for me because I've got um, a step down transformer. Anyway, this is only 110 volts on the mains. We're at 240 here. Uh, but I'm not too worried about that because uh, I've got a step step down transformer anyway um so i'm going to utilize the parts on this 
and so this transformer is going on there and this output transformer is also going on there although there is some someone's been around here doing a bit of botch work with the wiring so I've got to sort that out but that shouldn't be no big deal um, just spin, spin this round so we can have a look at the front it's one of the very early ones and you can see there um, so I had some of the tubes out of this as well um, but it's got some serious faults on it this amp and the, the, prob the problem with it is as well it's, if you look inside it it's just a swine to get in and, and fix so I just thought I'll strip off all the parts which is the transformers basically I'm going to take off take off the parts there's a switch on there we can use um, yeah that one's not too bad foos odor over there so there's, there's, there's quite a few parts we can we can uh, take from this and um, yeah and then we'll just discard the rest for the scrap man so we're gonna I'm gonna strip those transformers off that um, and we'll, we'll push on in this video and and actually show you the tests I did earlier with this amp um, with the output transformer which is blown madam right I've got this tannoy PA up and running and uh, I've got got the well I've got some power going through it got about 154 volts on the Viriac and uh, it's drawing current okay um, but there's no output from the speaker at all it's completely dead so I think the uh, output transformer is blue madam but we've got one or two output transformers so we're going to replace that got some lying around so I'm going to do a test to make sure it is that and then if it is we're going to replace it um, I've been through um, there tested all the, the valve bases and all the voltages are there this transformer incidentally is a linear uh, output transformer which means that the screens are being fed from the transformer where on a guitar amp they're fed from a dropping resistor from the first node and then you've got another capacitor to that to create a second node and that's where the screens are fed from on this they're being fed directly from a transformer we tend not to do linear transformers in guitar amps so swapping that out it's not going to be no great thing I've got one one or two lying around and uh, but everything else seems to be working right I've uh, added another just tacked in another um, output transformer and uh, it works and it's very quiet so it definitely works so definitely the output transformer is blown on that but to be honest it's not a huge issue um, because as I say it's a linear output transformer anyway and we're not too bothered about that the main thing I've got a working amplifier now that I can restore and it shouldn't be too big a job this um, there ain't that many caps in it and there's not that, well, there's not that many components in it so we think that valve is microphonic that 686 I don't know whether I've got one of those in my stash of valves but I can have a look Yeah, this signal there, like I say, I don't want to put my finger on it because I don't know how leaky these caps are. If they're leaking DC on there, I don't want to nip. So, Ooh, strange pots look. Yeah, what we call those. Look a bit like an upside down frying pan. I think we call those frying pan knobs. Does the tone work? doesn't appear to but caps could be 
shot so that's maybe why it's very quiet this amp and I know it's only on that little speaker but I don't hear much capacitance so not that that'll make any difference to me because I don't believe out capacitors in anything just don't no matter what people say they can reform them and everything else it's just I just can't see the point they're not exactly expensive things nowadays to buy this cheap as chips so you might as well change them and then you know you're safe with it and it's not like we've got to preserve the originality of this is it it's not like it's worth any dollar right we've done some work on this amp and um, we fitted the uh, um, power transformer that's that's fitted and we've removed all of this they've moved this out this uh, broken output transformer here and we've got a hole this is the this um, the transformer was wired down to that uh, tag board there so I'm thinking I'm going to put that back just to cover that hole um, and we're going to mount this output transformer perpendicular to that one we're going to mount this output transformer there which means I've got to lift the board there that's still got to be removed that were the brackets for that to rectifier the diode thing we've um, removed one side already so that's that and if we just spin it round so we've put a mains flex on it now this as I said this amp is 110 volts um, which I'm not bothered about because I've got a step, step down transformer um, and it allows me to use that transformer there um, and uh, you can see that transformer slightly on the tilt because this this baseboard has uh, got a bit pushed in over the years but uh, nonetheless it's fitted so we've got an American plug on this and the reason for that is is it'll that's so it can never be plugged into 240 by accident uh, using 110 volts use an American plug the step down transformers got an American socket um, so that's why we're doing that so that's that so there's the, the transformer and yeah the bolts are a bit long they're the original bolts off it so I've just used those because they were convenient a bit long but never mind now what I've also done is I've wired in this power switch so um, but also this I've used the American color coding on this cable as well again to prevent any confusion whatsoever that this is wired at 110 volts so we've got black as hot and white as neutral um, and I've wired that into the switch out of the switch sorry let's try try that again into the fuse the out of the fuse into the switch and then that'll come out of the switch when we wire that transformer up um, and neutrals on the switch as well because it's double pole um, so neutrals already wired we just wired the transformer to the other side of that neutral now that the ground is on there you can see they're not tightened up yet because we may need to add now if you look at that I've got two ground wires there and there's a reason for that so while I was working on this amp I noticed that and if we if we just zoom in you can see can you see that wafer between the top and the sides that that's an insulation wafer so the way they got around making this chassis safe basically was they put um, they put um, neutral on the um, on the top where all the wiring is on the on the top of the chassis and then they use those capacitors to isolate it and then grounded grounded from those capacitors to the sides um, so so the sides had an earth the tops had so the top actually didn't have an, an earth to, to um to the so wall socket so because that's isolated i've then had to um i've had to put an extra you can just see if i try and get down there we just zoom out a bit so you can see there i've had to put an extra one and that that'll be bolted onto there so we've got that all um under one ground to the wall socket so yeah, I didn't spot that straight away, um, but that is isolated 
by that wafer that they've got and the wafer goes all the way around so on every, each side of that uh, so that's that's covered that anything else so we've got obviously usual thing when you take a transformer off an amplifier usual thing is you've got short wires or whatever however the live um, will reach the switch the ground won't sorry the neutral won't and that's that's a ground as well I do on there um, so we've got that additional ground on the um, which actually went to the cathode on one of the six v6s so, so they, they'd obviously elevated that ground um, five volt uh, taps on the heat we're not going to use those so we're just going to uh, shrink wrap over those and tuck them down the side because we're not we're going to use solid state rectification on this um i could put a tube in it but it's and I've, it, there's even sockets here there's uh, sorry there's even holes here as well um if i wanted to do that but it's more messing about that and things and do i really want to do that when i can just have it solid state um no so i'm just going to put some solid, solid state rectifiers in there uh, solid state just diodes and job will be a squirrel um, 6.3 heaters there the green ones the green pair you can just see there so they've got to be properly extended and there's uh, a center tap for the heaters and there's also a center tap for the AC as well which is good so there's all that to do as well and yeah so just got to find some wire to do all that with um, and then we'll have all that wired up wired up we need to find some capacitors for it um, because we're not using these even though they were this amp was absolutely silent when I run it up but we're not using those because they, they've just been in here years this amps from the 40s or very early 50s I have a feeling it's from the 40s I can not find any dates on it as such but it's quite old don't see it's very Brits don't seem did never seem to put dates on things like you do in America which is rather annoying but yeah so we uh, honing round there's still a bit more so we're going to lift this board um, and then we can get that output transform bolted on and we're going to bolt that put just put that um, piece of fiber um, that wafer of uh, of terminals there just back over there to cover that hole and we ain't got that hole to worry about um, and then we're all looking at, once we get all that all that wired up and probably looking good to uh, get some uh, fire in its belly um, what else have we done yes one thing we have done so you can see that aluminium plate there um, just zoom out you can see that all of it so if we look on this side here you can see that I've I've removed the impedance selector uh, one is because we had no use for it until because it, even if we had it were lethal so we're not using that and um, I've removed those two speaker sockets there that are on the side so they've gone those strange pin sockets wherever they were so those have gone um, so if we mount the output transformer here we're going to use this one for a speaker socket so I'm going to take that out so again we only need one input on this amp so that's going and we're going to what we're going to do there um, is just have a look what we're going to do let me just see it there what we're going to do there is we're going to have to put a piece of aluminium over the back of the hole and then re-drill it and put a jack socket in for the speaker so that's how we're going to do that and what else ah so here's a bit of a result so if if we hone in oh, pink's just come through the cat flap if we just hone in there we can see that there's a um a hole has been drilled previously there um and all i've got to do is drill through the face plate and voila we've got our input on the front what a result that is that's an absolute result so spotted that so that's good 
Um, and the other thing we need on this amp is a pilot light. And I'm not sure how we're going to do that pilot light yet. I may use a 250 volt one, which I do have some of those. Or I may, or I could use that five volt tapping and just tap a um, pilot light off of that. So there's options there for that. So that's something else I've got to look at because we do need a pilot light on it. But it's taking shape slowly. We've still got abundance of wires hanging out of it and things, but most of that we won't need anyway. Start testing around on these resistors on these valve bases as well make sure all of those are uh, intolerance uh, for looks like we've got four 470 k resistors there i would imagine they are uh, grid leaks right we've made some progress with this amp quite a bit of progress the power switch that we originally had in has gone um one of the terminals was snapped on it i didn't actually notice that at all I came to wire up the, the transformer to it um, and although I could have soldered onto it it's, I'm not into lying things across so I've binned it because it's just not safe enough um, added a pilot light there what else um, capacitor there that's the um, it's not soldered up yet it's just tacked on that's um, that's for the um, 6A, the 6A valve, 6AT6, 6AV6, whichever that is. Um, another one there, that's for the EF37A. There, so we've got a node for that. And the other nodes, are, if we turn this over, are there. So I've got 200 microfarads in series. So I've got 50 microfarad there. Um, and then I've got a 47 which is going to be for the screens there on that uh, where the, I've plated over where the other capacitors were so those they've gone and I've put the output transformer on which is there uh, now I've had to remake those wires I think you saw that at the beginning um, so I've, re I've had to take the, the um, bells off and get inside and, and shrink tube up to those to make it to, so it was safe so he's on I've also had to do a turns ratio test on it um because it, it turns out that transformer was eight eight got an eight ohms tap and a 16 ohms tap well obviously I didn't know which were which so I've had to do a turns ratio test to work that out uh, so I've done that so we've got two speaker sockets on the back now there for that and you can see the pilot light there and we've got the jack socket in um, in there so we've just about got all the hardware on that we need now I've got this was that transformer that was here um, that's, that's exactly what that is by the look of it it's a transformer that's on the input stage we don't need that on a guitar amp so we've removed that and we're just going to wire a front end up and then the rest of the circuit will remain the same so and that pot that was on the side um, was something to do with that regulating it so um, I don't know where that pot's gone now that's the bell that's the transformer where that pot's gone I probably slung it so we took all that off as well so we're just going to go straight into this with a grid stopper um, into the control grid which is on the top of the valve and then straight from this socket there so we'll have that wired up that'll be most squirrelable and um, everything else will leave the same so if we just get back inside it again heaters are there so we've just got to fix on and wire the heaters up because of course they, they were serous filament which may, means the heaters were wired in series so we've now got to wire those parallel for the four valves and we've just got to now we've got this item here which came out of that cinema ramp um, and I'm going to clean this up um, and mount the diodes on there because it's a very solid piece of kit 
so it makes sense to use it and I'm going to mount that there like that um, and then where the, so the AC wires reach from the transformer so I haven't got to be extending those and that'll, that'll go straight onto the diodes then from the diodes to the HT fuse out to the HT fuse um, and that come, that will bring us down onto here to that first node and then we've got the center tap here of the output transformer um, and then we, because we've got all this set out here it's going to be white actually I'm going to wipe that off it's more of the cleaning alcohol and stuff I don't know what's happened there um, but these have all been cleaned and nice and shiny so then from from when we get here we can just put um, a dropping resistor down to the screens um, off that second node there and then from there on um, and we can run the resistors from here to here on the screens uh, so onto the screens of the tubes so from there to there I've got a couple of 1.5 K's that will do that nicely for the screen resistors we're going to have a 4.7 K dropping resistor from node 1 to node 2 sorry about the traffic there going by I've got the door open and then we'll, from there on we'll drop down to this um, working his way back to the 686 and then I've got this capacitor in here for the um, for the uh, BF37A. Now looking at some of the components on this board, and uh, just scroll, zoom out. Now I want to keep as many of these values as I can because I want to use this amp circuitry. Unless it sounds absolute tosh, then we will change them. These measure, um, these dog bone resistors, these are plate resistors, and these measure at about 19k. Now looking at those colours, if anything's to go by, um, brown one green five and then you've got orange so 15k so i think and there's two of those there's another one over there i think those are 15k resistors they've gone a bit high in value the only problem we may find with those plate resistors is of course we're going to have a lot more ht um, than we had before the maximum we could only ever have on this would be 240 because that's the maximum we get on the mains we could have as much as 350 on there we could end up with too much plate voltage on these uh, on these preamp valves so we're not sure with that one yet and then we've got another one of these dog bone resistors there um, I'm really not sure what value that is silver red with a yellow dot I would say no idea So very difficult to read those so there's that one this is a coupling cap the old uh, wax slug here 500 volt working and that is 0.3 microfarad so 30 nanofarad so we'll put a 33 nanofarad in there because we've got to replace that we've got some resistors there um, three of them wired together in parallel very strange 15 ohms I don't know three 15 ohm resistors wired in parallel I don't know strange that one then we've got the third uh, 33 uh, sorry 330 there um, on that and I think that is the cathode resistor for that 6AV6 that's the cathode bypass cap which is let's see if we can hone in on that and see what it is it's 12 volt working that's a hundred microfarad so that shouldn't be too much problem to find one of those and then we've got another capacitor there um, and I'm not sure whether that's a smoothing cap or not I don't know I'm gonna to have to look into that I've got a feeling that could be because I've got wires coming from here look across there underneath and down to here so I'm not sure about that so in which case we may be doing away with one of these nodes here and adding it onto there if that's the case I ain't really traced this through properly and then we have got another one there not sure what that is there we're gonna to have to uh, sorry about that wire we're gonna to have to probably 
try and twist that round and see what it says on there and then up here we've got a 1k um, hone in we've got a 1k cathode resistor there and then we've got that and I can't see what the value of that is 12 volt working but I can't see what um, what that is interesting looking at that cap there you've got that number there 422 slash 1 so is that 1942 second week second month I have no idea but this amp is really old right we've moved on quite a bit with this amp and uh, we've now got it up, up we're doing some testing now I've got it up and running so I think when I last videoed you we were in we got to install this and you can see it there um, we was installing that and uh, I ended up putting a new um, a, a new uh, terminal uh, board on there because the other one was a bit minging and if you look we zoom in you can see those um, I've put those stanchions on there to lift it from from the metal and those are rather an ingenious thing so as I've come up with there so they are I'm just gonna turn it around those and those are the insulation of these um, earth terminals that I'll use let me just see if I can get in there there and what I do is I pull those off and solder them on because I don't like crimping them. So when I pull the, I pull these off, these things are solid and they're ideal for uh, mounting those boards. So um, a result that another one of my uh, oh, some pointless information there, but that's yeah. So why the pilot light up to the five volt feed? What used to be the rectifier? the um, meters swearing at me um, so wired up all the mains that's been wired up wired up the heaters which you can see here um, the yellow and green wire so the heaters are wired up now what I'm doing now is I've got this amp running um, I haven't got the the EF 37A in the, the first stage valve yet because when I plug that in I've got no volume and the thing just fires up and it's flat out and it's buzzing really badly because that's all not wired up properly um, so basically what I'm doing that I've got some resistors tacked in so the is the cathode resistor tacked in that's a 470 ohm so put quite a big one in to start off with um, to see where that gets so just to make sure we're not we're running the bias correctly so that's just tacked in for the time being and I've also tacked in um, some dropping resistors because we need what we need to do ignore that that's just connecting the cathode to that and we didn't put that wire on that's another job um, to this 686 so I've got various some various values going on here so I've got down there I've got 4.7 K from node 1 to node 2 and that's feeding two 1.5k resistors to the screens on the output valves. I've tacked in that 22k there, um, and that is running the 686, the third node. And that then goes through that dog bone resistor, which is that one there you can see uh, there. And on that we've got a mere 57 volts. So what I'm trying to do it here is get the voltages right on the anode on the plates for these last two valves. So if I take that off of there, so and at the moment I've got 82 volts on the Variac. Remember this is 110 volts is the max on this because that's the transformer we've used. So I've got I've got three and I'll just bring that around there. I've got 300, 327. So we've got a lot of voltage on this. 327 and then we've got 289 on the screens and then coming past there on that 22k we've got 162 so we've got a big drop there 
and then we've got an even bigger drop with this dog bone now this dog bone resistor measures about 19k and I think it should be 15k but one for the brand five I could be wrong I've never read these before but I'm just guessing but it's 19k what I've also done is I've got the the, the th I've got the fourth power node there and what I've, what if you remember here we had a, a big um, coupling cap there and what they'd done is they'd, they'd wired across there sorry there they'd wired across there to the coupling cap and then to the um, grids on the output valves so w what I did we remove that obviously caps are a lot smaller it's 30 nanofarad so I've put that one's about 31 it's just 33 but it measures about 31 so I've put that just across there like that and then connected to the screens that freed off that terminal and that's allowed me to use that um, to bridge that and then that's wired over to these two resistors here um, so this this dog bone resistor and this one these are running this uh, the plate and screen on that pentode valve on that EF 37A so that's what's going on there so I'm just gonna turn the variac up now a bit more as so I'll let these caps run for a bit at about half voltage so I'm now going up to 110 on the variac and that's where we are 110 so that is drawing 370 milliamps so now we need to test what voltages we've got so node 1 let's put that on the meter node 1 we've got 430 volts my word that transformers dishing out some voltage right we've done some more testing on here so we've got some on this uh, 686 or 6a whatever we think it is um, this valve is tated um, for some reason and um, so that dog bone resistor there with the orange dot on it which I think is 15k I've removed the other one that was there um, so with this tubing I was getting um, about 300 and odd volts on on the feed end of the resistor but then on the end that's connected to the tube I was getting 60 volts and that resistor was starting to boil it was be wax coated and you could see that boiling on there I've just changed that tube for a 6AV6 which is just an I again triode but basically the same same pin out um, and now and I've got now I've got a 100k resistor in there and I've got 125 volts on there with a 100k resistor and I knew something were wrong because if I go to this one that's feeding the EF 37A I've got 354 on that side and I've got 334 on the other side so that resistor's dropping about 20 odd volts yet on this one it, it would just pull in down it, I'd got so on this side I've got 360 volts but on the other side I've got 61 volts now I've got a hundred K in there and I've got 360 and I've got still got 125 on this side so that valve has got shorts in it and it's blue madam so I've removed that I knew something went right there because just couldn't balance up the voltages so he's gone so we've got that i've borrowed a 6av6 out of another amp put that in and that's cured his problem so i've got 56k uh, sorry 100k in there and i think i'm going to put a 56k in there and that might get me roughly where i want to be with that right i've got 47k in now um in place of what that dog bone resistor used to be so now we've got rid of that valve and that's actually sorted out a wealth of problems um, so this 10k resistor that I've got tacked in which we're probably going to keep that we're getting a bit warm as well now it's not um, things seem to have settled down so on node 1 I've got a staggering 428 volts off that transformer on there 
and then if I go to the second um, node I've got 353 got 1.5 K resistors on the screens which gives me 352 and then if I go down to the next node through that 2.2 K I've got 345 on there and that is feeding that 47k to the 6 AV6 and I've got 180 volts there now um, we're struggling to get more than 60 when that other tubing and if I go to um, the feed coming in I've got 339 volts going into the resistors uh, dropping resistor on um, on this EF37 the other side of that dropping resistor I've got 308 319 volts near enough and that's about where I wanted to be with that to get the most gain out of it so 300 volts will get us roughly where we want so we'll put the values in uh, that are in the um, <coughs> RCA2 manual and hopefully we'll get more gain out of that maximum gain so that's all looking pretty good. So at the so at the moment I've got I've, I think that's about 220k that and you can see that resistor there. I think that's about 220k. I forget what it measures now. Well, I th I'm sure that's what that value is. It's quite a high value. And tucked away down there, if we hone in. You can see that there. There's a 1.5 meg resistor that is the drop is the screen dropping resistor for the onto the screen of that valve sorry if I'm zoomed in you can see in there so if we look um, again on the plate of the F37A on the plate we've got 96 volts and on the screen we've got 41 which we will have a big drop with that 1.5 meg in there so we're going to look at some of the values for that and just to get that but the rest the rest of this circuit we're going to keep so moving on to this um, EF37A this pentode valve and what we're looking at here is this um, V out VRMS which is the gain uh, factor of that valve so we need to get as much gain out of it as we can this being a guitar amp let me just zoom in on that sorry move that out so you can see it better so if we look across there we've got about 300 volts just a shade more so it tells you the values to get the best best gain for the volt for the um, for the for the voltage that you've got um, and that's the voltage at, at which uh, which will arrive at your plate and screen resistor. So we've got 100k for the anode, 330 for grid two, there, and 1.2k for the for the cathode, um, which we've got 1k, so we've already got that, and that will give us what will that give us? That will give us 59 and that's about the best we're going to get because we ain't got got any more but we've got a little bit more voltage than that so round about 60 we're going to get out of that um, so that they're the values that we're actually going to put in there um, and according to that's from the uh, RCA uh, receiving tube manual so um, we're going to go with that right we've moved on quite a bit with this uh, with this amp um so let's just go through what uh, what we've done so far still got the bias tacked in um but more now we're going to do that later so we've got that 10k resistor in there now and 10k uh, um for the so we've got 10k on the first node going to the screen so i've got 10k from the second node to the third and um that is and then and this sort of thing I've, um, that's the dropping resistor again which is 20k 
Now that was that dog bone resistor. I cut that one out by mistake. Um, but end of the day, I've just basically changed most things on the board. Now I've done the I've done these resistors in series, and the reason for that is is they're not long enough. This board's so wide, and I don't want to be jailking them at either end and messing about. So I've only got one join in the middle. It's sent to most practical way of doing it so that's the way I've done it um, change this capacitor which is 100 nanofarad on there so he's been changed and I've got again I've done this thing the series thing that was 50 nanofarad so I put 200 in series that's given me 50 and I needed 330 here so I've got 220 and 100 that gave me 324 I've had to shrink to that middle part there because it's close to that uh, bolt. Now I've moved, I've moved one or two things around and made some room. This cathode bypass capacitor for this 6AV6, um, I've just tagged it on to the resistor. Um, moving bits of bobs around, I've finished up now with a spur, some spur terminal space here and and uh, and also there. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to I'm going to split the bias on these valves and have a bias resistor for each each tube. Um, so I'm going to have a bypass cap and a resistor bypass cap and resistor there for each tube. So that's how I'm going to do the bias. We are missing at the moment. I have wired up the input, um, and that's still humming quite badly. I've put because uh, the obviously the gr control grids on top of the valve so I've got a um, uh, grommet in there and I've put the wire through and um, that that tube that EF 37a we had a, a can to go over it to screen it and I've lost it believe it or not Fool, I don't know what I've done with it oh fool am I I've looked high and low for it, can't find it. So I've either accidentally thrown it away or I've put it somewhere safe, which is fatal with me. If I put anything away safe, it, it never seen again. So that is a bit of a problem. The other thing is the volumes. So the, these volume pots are about one point, about 1K, 1.2K. They're absolutely useless. Um, so we're going to have to put a one meg pot in and we're also going to have to split this so here is where we go to the grid on the 6AV6 and that's the coupling cap from the, the Penta or the EF37 so we're going to have to split that and put the volume in between those there on that. so we're going to have to split that and put a volume in there um, tone control works now since we've done since we've recapped it that, that works and believe it or not there's a capacitor there um, and normally when I find these they don't leak at all and that one's the same no DC is leaking onto that tone pot it's a very strange way of doing the tone but I'm leaving it it's not a brilliant tone control but it's hard to tell until you get, get through a cab and start playing the guitar through it so I'm leaving that for the time being I've, I've tried to leave as much of this circuit as I can and um, I mean, reasonably successful there is obviously I've had to change the front end of that valve that's um, I've had that pento valve as we're coming in there because we're obviously adding a guitar input and so on so I've had to change that um, those values that, that we chose from that RCA manual this amp has got so much more gain now so that worked really well we've got plenty of gain so I, I tested the voltages on the screen and the plate on the the F37 and they're they're about identical the the screens a volt lower so that's acceptable so that's worked out really well right we've uh, got most of this finished in here now um, we've still got a few jobs to do um, so we we installed that master volume uh, sorry that volume there got that there is a problem with this amp and it is that socket for that 6AV6 um, it was very corroded and um, it's 
needs to be changed and it won't it's noisy no matter how much I clean it move the valve and it's making a right row so that's got I've got to get a new socket for that definitely that's had it so that's that's one thing that we need to do but other than that things are mostly completed that pot there which we not obviously don't need now um, can't get the knob off that it's absolutely solid I managed to get the other one off and we fitted that pot the tone controls wide back to front that were obviously from the day it were made so we need to swap that around tone's not tone's a bit strange it's a bit older nothing but we'll look more into that this amp is incredibly loud I've not put a guitar through it yet but it really has got some signal here's some volume um, what else have I done so I've uh, I've siliconed the caps I'm waiting for that to dry I've siliconed the caps um, on the um, on the underneath side the node 1 and node 2 caps so I've done that and um, yes it's uh, so we've had it now what I've done with the uh, I put a couple of 6v6s in now the other ones were just test ones and uh, I've done a separate cathode uh, resistor for each each tube on this one and I've finished up um, done the old series thing again with the uh, with those but one of the reasons I had to do that was to get the value so I finished up with about 777 ohms this side, 782 that side, which is about 5 ohms difference. And the uh, dissipation is 12.55 watts on this tube and 12.44 on that one. How's that for matching, for matching tubes? So we've done, we've done really well with that. 14 watts we've got about 90 percent it's cathode biased um so that's okay you can have up to 100 i've set it at 90 so about around about 90 12 and a half watts should be 14 but we'll leave it at that so that's done um worked out most of this circuit now but there is still odd little bits so this this these capacitors which are in series so you can class it as one capacitor that's here got a, a feed coming off there and a feed going to there to this 470k resistor and then that goes um back on there to the uh, uh well that's going through the volume but finishes up coming back here um to the uh, control grid on that 6av6 so not only is the plate being fed into that the um the screen's being fed into it as well right i've had a, a few minor issues with this with this amp so getting the pot getting the knobs off was an absolute nightmare uh, which i've i've managed to uh, managed to do we remove that pot for the other volume channel because we don't need that um tone control now works as i said before but it's it wired back to front at the factory so if you remember, if we look at this EF37A, remember I said I'd lost the um, the screen cap that goes over it. Um, no idea what I've done with that. I have no idea. I've looked high and low for it. So here's the problem. So me being forever resourceful has come up with a solution for that and here's one I prepared earlier and there we go so that's just completely got rid of it um, so that will be going on there I might even have a smaller one um, and there we go a nice coffee cup on there that looks i don't know where it looks really um but i'm just gonna a few dabs of silicon to keep just to hold it on um and he'll be a winner right i've got the top cover here um and as you can see this handle there is absolutely 
rotated. Let me just get a bit more light. That's better. So we're going to take that handle off and we've got a new handle for it. So we're going to put that on there. Job 39D. So at least it'll have a decent handle because that is absolutely had it. Um, it's also come away from the metal there and it's quite uh, sharp when you pick that up. So we need to get that sorted. Right, we'll have a listen to this uh, tannoy then. Um, got it all back together. Still needs a few bits doing to it, but basically we've got it up and running. I'm just going to turn this microphone off because it affects the sound. <laughs> So there's a demo there of, uh, of the old tannoy. Um, quite a bit different sound to a lot of the amps I've got. Um, and actually I, I did have that on a, one of my WEM Dominator 1B12 cabs. Um, just unplugged the Dominator amplifier and plugged this in. And there's a lot more bass here on that, on that single 1B12, which is strange given that it's now through, a, uh, well, 2B12, because I'm using half of that. Um, but I've got some uh, I've got some ideas for some mods for this amp, um, and we're going to have a we're going to have a quick look at those um, before we sign off. Um, but basically, that's uh, it, this is a work in progress. This amp, and uh, I'm quite enjoying working on this one. It's uh, a bit different to some of them I've done where it started out as a serious filament amp, and then I've you know we've, we've we've got this running on 110 volts here in Blighty, so we can see the tra we've got the transformer there. You can just see that running. 
It's um, a very middly, very middly amp, this, the sound of this. Um, so I'm mulling over various mods that to, to go through this, to, to go through, go into this amp. Um, probably three or four mods. I'm, I'm uh, mulling over whether to add some kind of tone stack into it because it really doesn't have one. That that as we know, that tone's running off uh, off the plates of the um, of the output valves. Very strange way they've done that. Um, so there's really no signal loss, which is, which is why this amp's incredibly loud. So if we put a tone stack in it, um, we'll certainly get, we will get an improved, well, more variable tone, but it won't be as loud because you get loss, obviously, when you put, as you know, when you put tone stacks in there. Um, but this, there's also some, some mods I want to do on, the, on that EF37A per pento valve. On looking at that, um, that amp, that valve is actually wired as a triode and we're going to have a look at this because I've actually traced this amp out on 99% of it I've traced it out so we're going to have a look at the schematic on this um, and uh, you'll see what I mean when I show you it's wired as a triode it took me a while to twig it and so as I was drawing it out and I finally realised um, so I went and looked in a few books and one thing or another and I was right, it is wired in triode. It's decoupled from the DC, but it's normally they're decoupled. Bef uh, normally they're wired, because to get them in triode you, you're going to wire the, the screen to the plate. And that's normally done before it's, it's decoupled, um, before you block out the DC um, with the coupling capacitors. But in actual fact in this it's been done after that, but nonetheless... The, the plate and the screen are still wired together so it is wired in triode not pentode so that's something we're going to look at so if we look at this uh, schematic that I've uh, traced out of this uh, tannoy amp including some of the changes that I've had to make to make it into a guitar amp so if we look at this EF37A we can see there from the plate we've got this 50 nanofarad cap coming down there from the screen we've also got a 50 nanofarad cap coming down to this 470k which is almost like a grid stopper and that's going into the being joined there so you can see the joined um, they're going into the volume and then into the control grid of the 6AV6 so from that we deduce that that is wired as, as a triode and not a pentode. So here's some of the other things that, that I've done there. So if we hone in there, we've I've got a 25k grid stopper. And that was actually conveniently wired into a, a spare cap that I had. Because remember that's, that's a top cap control grid valve. So we've got 25k there. We added one meg. Uh, to ground for the um, grid leak. Uh, we kept the um, values on the um, on the cathode 1.2k 100 microfarad um, bypass cap. Because remember, we want to try and keep as much of this as we can. So to get more gain from this amp, we swapped um, we swapped out the bias uh, the, sorry the plate resistor and the screen resistor um, so the plate resistor is now 100k and I can't remember what the plate resistor was on that exactly um, and the but this the screen resistor 330k I think that was 1.5 meg so we've dropped those down and that's we remember we use that RCA manual to do that receiving tube manual and that's that's given us loads more gain out of this tube so we did that um we added we moved the volume and changed it to a 500k pot because that volume didn't work very well and it really was in the wrong place on the in the amp so we put it after the first stage which is generally what people do now let's move on to this 6av6 tube here so we kept the 
original bypass cap and cathode, uh, sorry, bypass uh, bias resistor for the cathode and cathode bias, cathode bypass cap. We kept those values 33 nanofarad, I think that was 30 nanofarad. We'll try finding one of those. So we've got 33 in there. Now, what I've put here, I've not done yet, and this is one of the mods that I want to do here. Um, is a master volume so I want to put a master volume in this amp before this phase inverter um, that we've got here this transformer so between between the 6AV6 and the phase inverter I want to put a master volume in there um, don't know how that's going to work pan out but um, that's what I want to do so that's one that's one of the mods that we want to do so most of this output stage um, we kept the same with exception of those screen resistors there 1.5k but the rest of this we've not really touched we just left it um, and the only other thing we changed of course were the bias um, the bias resistors which we split off one for each tube and we put 47 microfarad bypass cap and obviously we've added more voltage to this amp so we've had those values have had to change there um what uh what else so the other thing is was we changed was the um the dropping resistors so 10k from from the plates to the screens and obviously we we up the the capacitors they were 32s we've now got 47 microfarad then we've got another 10k dropping resistor from the screens to another 47 that's for the 6av6 and you can see that running down there to a 47k plate resistor then we've got 20k dropping resistor um, and that's going down to this 100k sorry just move across on the camera 100k plate resistor and the 330 screen resistor and that's basically the uh, so that's basically the mods that we've done so uh, we've kept some values um, the 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 that one um, and the 33 nanofarad um, we kept those values we kept the phase inverter as the transformer and all the output stage is still virtually the same so the only mods we obviously this mod we had to make because we had to convert the front end of that tube to a guitar for guitar so we remove that transformer if you remember that we had the, there that trans that circular transformer oh and i found the cap can as well that went over that here 37a so so yeah so that's that's basically the, the schematic for that um so i'm gonna i'm gonna close up this video now um and i'm gonna do another video on the on the some of the mods the the master volume mod that we we propose to put in here and i've also got some more ideas for this um pentode valve this EF37A well it's actually not my idea it's out of a book um, so I've got an idea that I'm going to pop uh, do some mods to that as well um, we're going to look at that treble um, that tone control tone pot um, and change that see if we can get that tone to be a bit more effective and I'm going to mull over whether to put a tone stack in this amp or not um, that's one I've got to think about. So um, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, so thanks for watching um, and listen to me prattle on with this. And you all stay safe and take care. And I'll see you in a future video.